8.55 p.m. Eastern Time and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. This was probably the dullest day of the war, which is saying something. But there's no present prospect that the war is going to be called off, and before long the peoples of Western Europe may look back to the good old days when it was dull. President Roosevelt made no comment on the hints from Berlin that he might be asked to serve as a mediator, but earlier this evening, Albert Warner reported from Washington over this network that the administration doesn't want to be rushed into helping make a one-sided peace, and there is no evidence that the Allies want any outside mediation. There is evidence, however, that they aren't going to let Hitler load them with the blame for continuing the war. Prime Minister Chamberlain will make his weekly report to the House of Commons, probably on Wednesday, and the London Dispatch tonight predicts that he will say that Hitler's proposal for a general conference on the future of Europe might be accepted on these three conditions. That the Germans must not go into the conference claiming the right to keep all they have conquered. That they must be ready to discuss other topics besides colonies and disarmament, which Hitler suggested. Such topics, perhaps, as the restoration of Poland and of Czechoslovakia. And that Germany must recognize the refugee Polish government and agree to its taking part in the conference, too. Now, there's no visible reason to suppose that Hitler will even consider these terms. He has insisted that the Polish question will be settled entirely between Germany and Russia, and he regards the Czechoslovak question as closed. But at least this helps to define the issue and makes it harder for Hitler to represent himself as the sole champion of peace. He says he will stop the war on certain terms. The Allies say they will stop it on certain other terms. There seems to be some hope in London that Hitler will then come up with new and more acceptable proposals, but not if you believe what he said yesterday. Virginia Guida, the most renowned and authoritative of Italian editors, also wrote today about three points essential to peace, but three very different points. These are justice and recognition of the rights of peoples, the establishment of order in national economies to aid trade between nations, and a reasonable disarmament. Nobody could disagree with the importance of these problems. But Mr. Guida added that for the last time, Hitler had placed these questions before the democracies. That is, unless England and France accept Hitler's definition of justice and the rights of peoples, the war will be their fault. Well, it appears from Hitler's speech that when he speaks of the rights of peoples, he means the rights of some peoples, the Germans first, then the Russians, and perhaps still the Italians too, if you get around to them. But neither he nor Mr. Gaida means the rights of the Polish people or the Czech people or the Albanian people. This is not a question of moral theory, but of practical politics. It is clear enough that Poland, for instance, can never have a secure future except in reasonable harmony with Germany and Russia. That is a mere question of comparative force. So also, Czechoslovakia can have no secure future without some reasonable basis of getting along with Germany. But there is no evidence in history that the kind of solution of the Czech problem which the Germans have made, the kind of solution of the Polish problem which the Germans and Russians are making, will be any more durable than the solution of those problems that was written into the treaties of 1919. President Roosevelt put that very clearly in his peace appeal to the King of Italy on August 24th. I quote, Efforts by the strong to dominate the weak will lead not only to war, but to long future years of oppression on the part of the victors and to rebellion on the part of the vanquished. So history teaches us, end quote. So it does. Not only the history of Germany since the Treaty of Versailles and Russia in the brief period of Polish domination 300 years ago, but the history of Poland and of Czechoslovakia too. In other words, and it is worth remembering this in the present interlude, while war aims are being discussed and before the fighting really begins, it is not a choice between a practical and realistic solution proposed by the authoritarian states and the cloudy idealism of the democracies. It is a choice between two solutions of Eastern European problems, of which one will not work unless the Nazi state proves far more just to minorities or far more efficient in oppression than the old empires, while the other will not work without more goodwill than can be found in Europe at present. There is likely to be even less after this war is over. On the neutrality front, Senator Pittman issued a communique today saying that he believed the amended bill would pass by next Saturday, at least two weeks earlier than was expected. The Senate debate was adjourned over the weekend on, on account of lack of audience appeal. President Roosevelt announced that an unidentified submarine had been seen 15 miles off Miami, 285 miles within the safety zone. Of course, the safety zone de declaration doesn't say that belligerent warships must keep out, only that they mustn't do any fighting. But what are they there for? American neutrality is a serious matter. It seems a pity that it threatens to provide the war with comic relief. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.